morning. My name is Donna Gall and I work for the University of Glasgow in Scotland and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about studying at the University of Glasgow. Um, so hopefully you can see my presentation. Um, now the University of Glasgow is one of the oldest institutions in the English-speaking world. We were established in 1451 um, which makes us the fourth oldest in the English-speaking world. And we are one of Scotland's ancient institutions. We're a very highly ranked university, ranked in the top 100 in the QS and the Times Higher Education rankings. And we are also UK University of the Year 2020 and Scottish University of the Year 2022. We're also a member of the prestigious Russell Group, which is a group of research intensive institutions in the UK, um, similar to the group of eight in Australia or the uh, Ivy League in the US. We're a very diverse institution. We have 33,000 students studying with us here in Glasgow from over 140 different countries. So it's a real mixture of different nationalities in the classroom. We also have a very diverse staff body as well. Now, when we look at rankings in a little bit more detail, you can see here some of our subject rankings. And this is through the Complete University Guide 2022. And what this shows is not only are we strong in a number of areas, but also it's a range of areas. So quite a mixture of subjects from dentistry to product design engineering, sports science, theater studies. So there's a huge range of subjects on offer here at Glasgow. Now we are a Scottish institution. Um, we're very proud to be Scottish and Scotland has a lot to offer students when they're studying here. It's a very green and beautiful environment. And it has been voted one of the most beautiful countries in the world. So it's not just me that says that, it is other people as well. It is the rough guide that has voted Scotland most beautiful country in the world. And you can explore that while you are studying here with us. If you're interested in outdoor activities, there's a huge range of options in the vicinity of the university, but also across the country for you to experience. You can climb mountains, you can do hill walking. It doesn't have to be hilly, you can do flat walks as well. And maybe you'd like to try some winter sports, perhaps skiing or snowboarding, um, and you don't have to go far to experience those. Scotland is renowned for its culture, and there's a lot of arts and, and culture here in Scotland. There are options for live music and festivals and comedy shows all over the country. Scotland has festivals all year round, um, including the largest arts and cultural festival in the world, which takes place in Edinburgh every summer. There is also a lot of history available in Scotland, not just castles and, and ruins that you can explore and experience, uh, but also some extraordinary feats of architecture and engineering to explore, um, to get to know Scottish history and uh, Scottish culture that way. So if we think about Glasgow, now my institution is based in the city of Glasgow and Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland and the fourth largest in the UK. It's a huge amount on your doorstep to explore when you're a student here. But not only that, but we are the world's friendliest city. Again, it's not just me that says this. It is voted, I believe three years in a row now, Glasgow has been voted the world's friendliest city. And that's a real testament to the, the local population here. It's a very welcoming and warm environment here in Glasgow. It is also a hub in itself for culture and creativity. And it is a very green environment. Um, so when it comes to parks, you can see in the image behind me and in some of the slides I've shown you that Glasgow is a very green place. And it is also the name Glasgow means dear green place, which means there are over 90 parks and gardens for you to explore when you're here, including right next to the campus, the Kelvin Grove Park, and also a stone's throw from campus is the Glasgow Botanic Gardens. So a huge amount of green, relaxing space for you. 
When it comes to culture and creativity, UNESCO have named us the city of music for the UK. And there is a huge amount to experience when it comes to uh, music here in the city. You've got the hydro, which is in the slide, the image behind the, the words on this slide. The Scottish hydro is the fourth busiest arena venue in the world. And you can see huge names that come to Glasgow. But you will find throughout the city that there are also smaller venues where you can experience more sort of intimate gigs and experience maybe Scottish music, for example, for the first time. We also hold festivals such as Celtic Connections here in the city, which would give you a chance to experience new things. And as a city, we are also very proud to host very large events, such as the Euro 2020 football competition, which Hamden was one of the, the host venues for that competition this summer. And also COP26 is being held in Glasgow as we speak. And this is the largest conference that the UK has ever held. Um, and they are very, very welcome here in the city of Glasgow. Now, when we talk about studying at Glasgow, what can you expect? Well, this is the campus from the air. So most of what you see in this image does belong to part of the campus. And the campus is actually growing and being developed as we speak. But the main building there is possibly the one you will recognize. It's a gorgeous building overlooking Kelvin Grove Park in the city. And we call this the Gilbert Scott Building. Now, this is the main campus building, and it is often compared to being like something out of the Harry Potter films, similar to, to Hogwarts experience. It's a beautiful Gothic building um, that students can explore while they're here, may have classes in here or meetings, for example. Um, but there are lots of other buildings around this, and including the library, which is a 13 story library. There is a huge amount of space there for students and a huge amount of resources for students to use. And you can see that it is very easily accessed from the vicinity of that main building. Beside that, we have the Fraser building, which is one of the key buildings that international students will use. Um, you'll find all kinds of support services in there including international student support and also a doctor's surgery for if you need any of these services while you're studying with us. And then finally, something that is not in the image is our James McCune Smith building. And this is part of this campus development that we are working on here at the university. And it is part of a billion pound project to redevelop some parts of the campus that we have received back from someone who used to lease the land from us. Um, and it is the first building that, is that has opened, it opened this, this spring, um, and it is the first building of a range of buildings that is being developed for students. The James McCune Smith building is seven stories high and is a gorgeous building full of learning space. It's just for students to use for learning. There's a couple of meeting rooms and a couple of lecture sp spaces that is predominantly for you to use as a student for learning and studying. Now, what can you study when you're here at Glasgow? Well, in truth, almost every subject you might be able to think of. Um, we have a huge portfolio of programmes ranging from arts programmes to humanities to medicine and law. Um, social sciences such as history um, and also business and computing science. One thing that you will find is very popular here at Glasgow is our medicine and life science courses um, and also things like computing science. We don't offer fine art courses that is uh, not available so just to clarify the difference when we talk about art subjects there. So what do you need when you want to study at the University of Glasgow? Well, we accept a wide range of qualifications uh, from students around the world. As I said, we're a very diverse university, um, but I've given you some guidance on the most common qualifications around the world, A-levels, baccalaureate, um, or the US curriculum qualifications. However, each program has its own entry requirements. 
and you can see them on the individual programme pages. Now, if you are not taking one of these qualifications, you can find more details on international qualifications on our country pages, which will give you an indication of whether we're able to accept your high school qualification and what would be needed. If you don't meet those entry requirements, if there is a, a, a gap between high school and university, then we do have three foundation programs to choose from available through Kaplan at the Glasgow International College based here in Glasgow next to campus. And if you successfully complete that foundation, you will then progress into the degree that you are planning to join us for. And you can explore more at the Kaplan website page on that slide. We also assess students on their English language level, um, and you can see an example of some of our qualifications. These can be subject to change, so please check in case these have changed at all when you are applying. Um, and each program page will also show you the English requirements for that subject. This image is actually the inside of the James McCune Smith building I mentioned earlier. It's absolutely stunning, gorgeous building with lots and lots of study space, so beautiful inside. Now, how to apply. Students are likely to be using UCAS. So UCAS is the universities and colleges admission service for the UK, and students can apply for up to five different universities and track their application through the UCAS portal. At Glasgow, we are able to accept applications through the Common App, which is predominantly used to apply to the US. Um, however, you cannot use both. It needs to be one or the other. Okay. So when should you apply? Well, we follow the UCAS timeline for this. So applications open on the 7th of September. If you are planning to apply for medicine, dentistry, or veterinary medicine, you should be applying before the 15th of October. Then the 26th of January is the UCAS equal consideration deadline. And I would recommend that students attempt to get their application in before the 26th of January. However, in some cases, in a number of our courses, we are likely to be able to consider you after this and you will need to apply before the 30th of June. Any applications after that will fall into the UCAS clearing system. Now, what happens next? Well, you get either a conditional offer or an unconditional offer, unless, of course, you are unsuccessful. A conditional offer means there are things that you need to work towards, perhaps achieving your A-levels, and it's actually quite a common situation for students. However, if you've already completed all of your high school qualifications, an unconditional offer may be possible. You would then accept your first choice, a firm choice, and your second choice, which would be your insurance. Um, and then you will work towards meeting any conditions that you have um, or uh, start thinking about visas and accommodation and whatnot if you are unconditional. I've given you some guidance here on tuition fees. And you will find more information on tuition fees on our website. One of the questions that I get asked regularly is about scholarships. And at undergraduate level, we have one scholarship that covers most of our courses, which is the Undergraduate Excellence Scholarship. And students are automatically considered for this scholarship as part of the admissions process. It is £7,000 per year of study and it is awarded on academic merit basis. So it is looking at your grades. You will hear from the scholarships team after your offer, if you have been awarded this scholarship and you can read more about that scholarship on our website. We regularly get asked about cost of living. So we've given you a rough estimate. However, it is important to remember that this is an estimate. So it is a very individual, uh, thing. Um, however, it is down to, to us to give you some guidance on what to expect. So this is a monthly estimate for students, including an average of £550 per month for accommodation. 
Now, speaking about accommodation, we do offer a range of accommodation options for students. Um, and we average that cost out to be 550 per month. However, there are cheaper and more expensive options available. It is not compulsory to stay in university accommodation, but it does prove to be the most popular option. So you are encouraged to apply as soon as you are able to, and you can apply once you have accepted an offer of study at the university. So conditional firm or unconditional firm on UCAS. There are a range of accommodation options um, and vast majority are within walking distance of the campus. So probably a no more than a 30 minute walk. And international students are guaranteed accommodation if they apply by the deadline, which is in August. It's a very safe environment in university accommodation and university takes student well-being very, very seriously. Which brings me to the student support services that we provide for students. So when you are a student here, we want to make sure that you have the best experience, but also that you feel safe and secure while you're doing that. We provide a huge range of services for students, including international student support, the career service, English language support. The career service is something I, I would like to highlight. They put a lot of work into working towards student employability and uh, giving student lots, students lots of opportunities. One of those opportunities is our internship hub, which is a hub that is run by the career service where they advertise internship opportunities exclusively to Glasgow students. So definitely something worth exploring. As outside of the official university uh, support services, you also have uh, student-led support services through the Student Union and the Student Representative Council. Now these are really important services and uh, support systems for students um, and also allow you a chance to socialise, to get to know your, your city better and to explore maybe other methods of engaging with other students. So for example there are over 200 different clubs and societies for you to experience. And this is a wide range of clubs and societies. So it could be um, a sports society, it could be uh, a social activity, it could be a cultural group. So for example, we do have a South Asian student society um, where students can, can get together. But it can also be something that might be looking at the subject that you're studying. So there may be a, a group for your particular subject area and they may look at networking opportunities and a chance to uh, engage with potential employers. So there's a huge range of options out there for students. We have two student unions, um, the Glasgow University Union and the Queen Margaret Union um, that also will arrange activities and also provide social spaces for you to relax and enjoy. We also have our sports association. So this is the sports facilities that we have on campus, but also a chance for you to maybe join a, a team or a sports club uh, that takes your fancy. So a chance to try something maybe that you've done before, or maybe pick up a sport you've never tried before. For example, there is a wakeboarding student society. I've never tried that before. Uh, so a chance to do something new. But one of the key things I would add, the link at the bottom of this slide is to ask a student. So this is a chance for you to talk to our current students and alumni to get their opinions on their own experiences. And I would really encourage you to take advantage of that and listen to what they have to say about their own experiences. Here we go. That's it from me. So thank you very much. And uh, please do get in touch if you have any questions. And I would also encourage students to follow us on social media as you will find out lots of ways to engage with the university and learn more about studying at Glasgow that way. Thank you very much.